Hey, this is Ken Reservoir. We're going to talk about um, power functions in a series of videos. So, first of all, what is a power function? A power function is a function of the form f of x equals x to the n, where n, let me get my pen, n is the power, you can see, and we generally consider n to be non-negative because if it were negative then we'd have a rational function which uh, doesn't really look like a power function so where n is a non a non-negative oh my goodness I can't write a non negative real number. We've already looked at a bunch of uh, power functions in our work this year, so here are some examples. The first power function we looked at was when n equals 1, and that would be f of x equals x to the 1 which is basically your identity function y equals x and when you graph that you get something that looks like that goes through the origin goes through 1 1 2 2 uh, etc so that's y equals x there's an example here's another one if n equals 2 we have our basic squaring function and we know that that thing looks like uh, this pretty much going through 0 0 1 1 2 4 uh, negative 1 1 negative 2 4 um, and there you have it we've also seen n equals 3 which would be f of x equals x cubed that's our cubing function it goes through 0 0 1 1 and 2 8 negative 1 1 negative 2 negative 8 and so we have something like this uh, when they're discussing uh, power functions functions sorry they often restrict the domain to positive values of x but we'll do that when it's necessary so right now we'll consider things not just in quadrant 1 but over here also in quadrant 2 and over here also in quadrant 3 alright let's look at some other examples because I didn't say that the powers had to be integers I just said they uh, need to be non-negative real numbers and again I'm restricting it from being negative because that would give us a rational function but I didn't say it couldn't be a fraction so let's look at some of those we've uh, seen some examples of that already this year we've looked at n equals a half and be reminded here that if you have a power of one half that is the same thing as our square root function so there we go um, Goodness, there's a bug in here. Okay, and we know how that looks. Of course, its domain is restricted. Where's my pen? There it is. And it goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2, and looks like that. When n equals a third, we have our cube root function. And again, if you need a refresher on what um, fractional exponents mean, I'm going to have a video on that. Um, so you can check that out. But hopefully you remember that from another class. It goes through 1, 1, 8, 2. And of course, the negatives also. Negative 1, 1, negative 8, uh, negative 2. So there you have it. Um, it doesn't have to be the case where there's a 1 in the numerator. We have some other interesting examples that I can show here. And then I want to talk about 
uh, something I hope you'll notice. So let me do this. Let me let's look at this one. Y equals X to the two-thirds, which is really um, the cube root of X squared. And because we're squaring it, we're going to have even symmetry. And in fact, if you graph this, it would go through 0, 0. It would go through 1, 1. And we'll go through 8, comma 4. Why 8, comma 4? This is 8, comma 4. Because the cube root of 8 is 2, squaring that gives 4. And also, if we cube root negative 1, we get negative 1, and then squaring that, we get positive 1, which accounts for the even symmetry. And if we cube rooted negative 8, we get negative 2, but squaring that, we get uh, positive 4. So it also goes through 8, negative 8, comma, positive 4. So there you go. That one's kind of interesting. And you could also have y equals x uh, to the 3 fourths, which would be the fourth root of x cubed. Now the interesting thing about this one is because it's a fourth root, you can't take a fourth root of a negative, and so it only exists in the first quadrant. And the points it will hit are um, 1, 1, 0, 0, of course, and 16, comma, let's say this is 8, 16, comma, 8. Why is that? Because the fourth root of 16, remember this is the fourth root of x cubed, the fourth root of 16, sorry, let me do it this way because this is an easier way to compute it. You can write it either way. The fourth root of x, and 16 is x, so the fourth root of 16 is 2 cubed is 8. And then let me show you one last one, and then I'm going to go through and point out this pattern. So we can also do, excuse me, um, f of x equals x to the 5 fourths. And that would go through 0, 0, 1, 1. And it would actually, instead of curving the other way, it would curve up, much like a square root function. But, and I'm not drawing to scale here, it would go through 16, comma, 32. But it would have an upwards curve. You can see it's growing more quickly in the vertical than it is in the horizontal. And why is that? Why is it that it curves up here, but it curves out? there. And the answer is the power. I want you to notice that when the power was 1, it was at a 45 degree angle. There was no curve. When the power is greater than 1, uh, here's an example where it's greater than 1, it curves up. The power here is greater than 1. It curves up. The power down here. 5 fourths is greater than 1, so it curves up. Anytime the power is greater than 1, you'll have an upwards curve. Anytime the power is between 0 and 1, as 1 half is, you can see it curves out. It curves all these, curve out. So you have those cases for, let me express it like this, for f of x equals x to the n, if absolute value of, do I want to go absolute value of n? Um, no, because we're not considering negatives, sorry, if n is greater than 1, looks like that, if n equals 1, looks like that, 
if n is between 0 and 1. Looks like that. And I'm just drawing the first quadrant. I'm not mentioning what happens in the others because that depends on the symmetry, whether it's an odd or an even function. All right, so those are our power functions.